Hello, I would like to show you how to install Babette on a Windows computer. So Babette is an R package that combines a lot of Beast2 functionality, so you can call Beast2 from R. It's on a GitHub owned by ROpenSci, which peer reviews R code and the name is Babette. And Babette is actually multiple packages and it also needs to install Beast2. So there are, um, it's, it's not a very simple installation. Well, it's not too hard, you'll see. It's documented here. Uh, you can click both, it's the same link. And you see that, so Babette has two parts, installing Babette and its dependencies. Uh, because Babette's not on CRAN, not, uh, nor all of its dependencies, you need to do it like this, order does matter, and they need to install Beast2. So let's not try to be smart and just copy paste all these lines one by one to the uh, R uh, studio or from your R terminal uh, whatever you prefer. So note I use remotes so some people think uh, are used to using DevTools so DevTools was the package that used to do this uh, but it recently it uh, branched some of its functionality to the remote package. So this is a very slow Windows computer. Uh, that's why I put the resolution of the screen a bit lower, so it goes a bit faster. Uh, but I can't help it, so this will be uh, a longer video. So I also skip updating all uh, other packages that have more recent versions, just to speed up the video a bit. Right, and um, I'm gonna be I try to be as quick as possible, so already copy paste the next line. So this package that I'm installing now is called Beautier. Beautier, uh, it's named after Beauty uh, for R. So Beauty is a tool in the Beast2 package suite that allows you to set up your phylogenetic inference model and it will produce an XML file uh, in which you uh, with all the settings you've picked using the, the graphical user interface that Beauty has and you can use that XML file um, f to be run by Beast 2 on a computer cluster or whatever. So that's what Beauty does. Uh, you'll see that Babette is five packages actually and one of them is Beauty. It's the it's the bit the, the foundation of all other package of, of the other four and what Babette does, uh, it will connect all the other four packages in one more user-friendly uh, unit. Uh, but, well, uh, Beauty or on its own, it can produce an XML file. It can produce uh, an XML file that can be used by Beast2 from uh, an R uh, script or like just from R. And it, it, so it has a lot, like it doesn't have all the functionality in it that Beauty has yet. Uh, Beauty does a lot of things. Uh, for example, well, for starters, there's in Beauty, there's a package manager. And actually, we will install that a bit later because there's also an R package that does that called Maurice. So just to step back to, 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 to Beauty, -er, so you see a lot of functions that it's using. Uh, you can check if it's a, with side model, you use a tree prior, a clock model. You can create distributions, like an exponential distribution, inverse gamma distribution. You can create an inference model, which is a combination of a lot of things. Uh, parameters, uh, all these things. There's some checks, like is this a tree prior, is this a sigma parameter. Uh, so th there's a lot of functions that allows you to set up uh, your beauty, um, uh, your, your your beauty code, and and check it yourself. All right. So next package to install, uh, we already did that. Uh, should just use copy paste and install Tracerer. So Tracerer is Tracer, which is also part of Beast Two, for R. Well, actually, Tracer is not part of Beast Two, but it's commonly used. Tracer is a standalone tool that allows you to analyze, among others, Beast2 output files. And what Tracerer does, it allows you to do so from R. And so it gives you also exactly the same results. Um, but I do know that Tracer uh, has more functionality 
and Trace Aurora uh, only has the things that are uh, directly used um, uh, on the output of Beast 2, like uh, parsing the posterior files, the log files, uh, estimating the effective sample sizes. Uh, that's what Trace Aurora does. So let's take a look to the next line. I already copy pasted in my clipboard. So Tracer uses some uh, C++ code, especially estimating the effective sample sizes. And uh, that's a uh, that was a harder calculation. So I chose to do so uh, within C++ because it was at least a hundred times faster. Um, and actually, the most um, the hardest calculation was calculating the uh, autocorrelation uh, that is that if you have multiple samples that you can see if the, the the last sample has an effect on the next one and that calculation I just copied it from the Java code that's behind I think tracer or beast I'm not sure and I made it do exactly the same thing uh, so that's now uh, compiling so a tracer also it allows you to do some plots, I think. Uh, so let's take a look. Uh, let's use a different tab. Uh, because also tracer can be used standalone. So if you only want to install, uh, so if you only want to analyze your Beast 2 output files using tracer, you can do that. So I'm going now, I'm just now going to kill the time a bit. I'm going to the tracer website. It's an R package that works with these two output files. Uh, so, for example, here's, here's a nice example. It allows you, so what it does, you have an example beast 2 output file and it obtains the file name of it. It parses it. So, parsing means that you uh, put it into a higher level data format. So, it, it, it reads the text and converts it to a, I think, a nice data frame. Or perhaps it's a list, I'm unsure. And using that log file, it can remove the burn ins. So the burn in is important to remove that because when you do an MCMC, like a, a Markov chain Monte Carlo algorithm, then initially it needs to converge uh, to sampling a representative space of uh, parameter space. Uh, and uh, well, then you can calculate the effective sample size from that, and that needs to be above 200 according to the Beast book. All right, next thing, Beastier. So Beastier is the package that actually calls Beast2. So with Beastier, you can call Beast2 from R, and it works as you expect it. You may think that sounds simple, it is not, because I also allowed to, uh, like I wanted Beastier to be also able to run on a, on a computer cluster, and that means I wanted multiple processes, uh, like multiple Beast 2 runs at the same time. So, and that was, uh, initially that was hard, because Beast 2 creates files locally by default and I used a trick that I create a temporary folder where Beast2 writes two in different uh, for each run has its own yeah, I call it a bunker a tempor like a folder where it will pre produce its output too so Beast2 can run in parallel so that's that's just cool uh, so you can run it on a cluster I like that a lot All right, so we're um, already at the fourth package or close to B and so Beast2, uh, Beastier also allows you to install Beast2 from R. Actually, we can already see here's this function called install Beast2. It allows you to, um, it will automatically install it like the like a, a late version, like a, one of the newest versions. So the next package we're doing is Moriser. That's a, a way simpler one. So Moriser allows you to do Beast2 package management. So within Beauty uh, you can install Beast 2 packages and Maurice allows you to do so from R. Right then I will already uh, copy paste the next line we'll need to use. Uh, 
which is Babette. So paste it. So what Babette does, it connects these four packages into one useful bundle. And uh, so on its own it doesn't do much, but it allows you to just do a beast 2 run without creating uh, the beast 2 input file first, then using that uh, and call beast 2 to, to, to work on it, and then call tracer to analyze the output. But that does all in one go. Alright, so Babette is going and I'm now also going to install Beast 2 or put it on the clipboard. Yeah, so Babette, it also has some, f so that's this Babette run, that's the most important function, which means do a Beast 2 run uh, from, from within R. Next thing we'll need to do, install Beast 2. It's already installed, so let's uninstall it like it's already also there. And now we're going to install a fresh version of Beast 2. So I keep this rather up to date. So 2.6.0 is the latest stable version at the moment. So now I have Beast 2 installed. So it installs it to a default path. And I think now I can do Babette do. Uh, let's load Babette. So we're already done. I'm just going to check if it all works as intended. Babette, Babette, do. Let's take a look. So, because I have one Babette self test. So, Babette self test checks if everything is in place. Uh, by doing actually a Beast 2 run. Uh, it's very silent, uh, it follows the Unix rule, the golden rule of silence, which means if everything works, there will be no output. If there's an error, it will show that error. So I'm unsure how long this, uh, th this function will last. I know I've set it to the shortest time possible. Uh, but this is a very slow Windows computer. And so this may take uh, some bit. So it just to fill up the time. So Beast 2 is installed to some kind of default path. So if you want to find it, uh, you can take a look in Windows. It's see that put users, username, local beast. In Linux it's this. Under Mac I don't know the path. I do know that Babette does work under Mac as well. Alright, so the self-test, apparently it does show some output uh, that's friendly, so uh, I guess I chose that to show, oh yeah, it, it gives the output of a Beast 2 run, and instead of saving it in a, in a variable, it puts it on screen. So well done, that means I've just showed you how to install Babette on a Windows computer from R, and I wish you a very nice day, and enjoy Babette, bye!